Yeah, good afternoon. It's Jim from jagfx.com. It is Monday the 19th of April 2021. This is just my weekly analysis video where I go over all the pairs I'm trading on the daily time frame using the high probability and divergence trading methods. Uh, my apologies, the video is one or two days late. Normally I do it on the Saturday, sometimes a Sunday. Uh, this is about take three, I think. I had a couple of technical issues. Trading view wasn't showing all my drawing tools, so it was made it very hard to do a video. But we're all good now. Looks like everything's up and running. I had to do a reboot this morning, so life's good. First up, big welcome to everyone that's um, recently joined the YouTube channel or the Facebook group or the Telegram channel. It's greatly appreciated. Uh, I look forward to any interaction. If you've got any questions, feel free to fire away. Uh, like I always say, everyone's more than welcome to join any of those groups. Um, there's no charge, obviously, and it's just me posting trades and other people posting trading ideas, etc. You may learn something from it, may give you some ideas. Uh, look, just because I wrote a couple of books on trading doesn't mean that my methods are necessarily suit everyone. I get that. Like I always say, take my methods, do, do with them what you wish and make them your own. I encourage that. Uh, nothing better than coming up with your own trading system. Uh, in the meantime, I do take a lot of trades. Um, all my trades are recorded on a shared spreadsheet. So there's a results spreadsheet. The easiest place to get that's on Facebook. Uh, if you're not on Facebook or you can't find it, just drop me an email and I'll get it to you. Um, it's, it's been over 1,300 trades. They're all called at the time. Uh, so all trade entries are called and any trade management's called live. Um, so that's all very transparent. I also do these weekly videos. I try to do them on every weekend. And um, all my trades are actually uh, trade setups, uh, the screenshots taken, and that's put into a shared folder also. So... The links to those are in the description of the video, so if you want to access either the results spreadsheet or the links uh, for the actual screenshots, etc., they're all in the description of the video. So let's move on. Um, first up, we'll have a look at the news. Make sure I'm on the right week this week, because I was a week out last time I did a video. So today is Monday the 19th. This is the Forex Factory economic calendar. It's set up for me, my local time. I live in Vietnam, so that's it's one time zone in Vietnam. So if you're looking for that, it's Hanoi, the capital city. I, I live in Da Nang, which is in the central part of Vietnam on the beach. So this is set up for me. So there's no news on Monday, which is today, none for Tuesday. Then I'm basically looking at the red ones. They're the high impact ones. So New Zealand, 5.45 a.m., we've got their CPI numbers. But these are the biggies on Wednesday, 9 p.m. my time. I have, oh, We have Canadian interest rate news, that's CAD, Canada. You can just click on this little yellow envelope if you want more information. Um, so that's all Canadian-related interest rate news, which can be a mover marker, moving market mover, yeah, that's it. All right, on Thursday, we've got the Euro um, Monetary Policy Statement meet main refinancing, which is interest rates for Europe also. So that can affect the Euro. Uh, then for the rest of the week, we've got all the flash manufacturing PMI numbers out of various countries in Europe and the US, I believe. Yep, US, Europe, Great Britain. So yeah, so mainly the Canadian interest rates Euro interest rates and probably some of these flash manufacturing numbers. So it's quite start of the week, but it picks up. All right, like my trading, uh, let's find my, that's not the one I'm after. This one here, I think, yeah. All right, when you have a look at my charts, you'll see a lot of lines. There's a lot happening. It can be a little bit intimidating if it's the first time you're watching one of my videos. You can pause the video, read this document, or take a screenshot and like I always say, if English is not your first language, you don't understand me, you don't understand the Australian accent, just slow the video down, pause the video. You can read my notes on the charts. Uh, I'm pretty thorough when it comes to the uh, markings up of everything. So, But this document here tells you what all the indicators are, what the settings are, what the different coloured lines mean, what S1, S2 represents. Uh, you can read through this. I'll bring it up at the end of the... Um, video also so you can have another look at it. 
So it just tells you what I'm the gist of the system in very you know, very um, basic sort of things. Okay, let's have a look at the actual charts. So this is trading view. It is Monday, the market is open. So normally I do this on the weekend, this video when the market's closed and give you a heads up what's coming on Monday, which I didn't do this week, obviously, because I didn't do a video. So this is my watch list on the right. So in alphabetical order, these are all the pairs I'm trading on the daily time frame. Um, if it's highlighted in blue, means there's trades on, no highlight, no trades. Pink means I'm just either looking at something or something coming up. So that's what the... So we'll go through these pairs. Like I said, these charts look busy, and we always start off with the Aussie Swiss, which is a busy chart. You can see my notes here, S1, S2, S3, sequences. That's just when I start a trading sequence. Now, what I used to do back a few months ago was I was basically hedging, using my hedging technique on every sequence of trades. So as soon as a trade went against me, I would hedge it. I don't do that so much these days. I still do it, but only on particular setups, and it normally involves setups that have got hidden divergence. But just regular divergence or normal trades, I'm trading the more traditional method, which everyone, sort of most people trade, and I appreciate that most of my readers are from the US, uh, where you can't hedge if you've got a US-based broker. So I'm sort of sticking with the majority, but I still like my hedging. So... For example, Aussie Swiss, sequence one starts all the way over here. Sequence two's here, sequence three here. You can see they match up with a sequence one, sequence two, sequence three. There's notes for each one and some other notes. Obviously, my sell trades are the red lines, buy trades are the blue lines. If you read that Word document, you know that the red lines are, red trend lines are bearish divergence, either formed or forming and green are bullish divergence, either forming or forming. Blue lines are something that interests me. Red dotted lines are stop loss levels. Yellow dash lines or yellow solid lines are overall break even. So if you're not into the hedging, don't worry about sequence one or the sequence two so much, or sequence one in this case. At the moment, I'm positive 0 0.026. A lot of trades on, trying to go to the upside. Now, let's look at the a few other things on the chart. You'll see the name of the pair, profit to date, $700.75. That's on that pair only. So that's since I've been trading the Aussie Swiss, that's how much money I've made on that. And that's roughly based on a 0.02 base lot for all my trading. I'll just keep it simple for these examples. So that's about 20 cents a pip. And I sometimes have an overall break even level, overall B slash E's break even. 76929, which is way up here somewhere. Not, I'm not heading there anytime soon. But in the meantime, let's have a look at sequence two. Sequence two is a sell trade here. You can see my notes. Higher risk trade is trading against the trend. See the trend's going up. The moving averages are heading up. Coming against the trend. The stop in place. Came very close to my stop. Didn't touch it. Back there sideways again, back down near my entry level. In the meantime, I got this buy signal here, S3, which was based on hidden bullish divergence. Now, remember I said I like hedging on hidden bullish divergence, so I entered that with no stop, and it went against me. Took a hedge sell, which is this red one, and took a second buy, and my overall break even for these three trades just in here, see the break even here, is at this 71660. So that's this yellow dashed line there. We're heading up there on Thursday, then Friday dropped away, and Monday start to head back up there. MACD Platinum, which is this indicator down here, so zero lag MACD, it's below the zero level. So that's good, because I'm always looking to buy when it's below the zero level and sell when it's above the zero level. So the reason I didn't get out of this trade is because I've took, taken this tra trade here, it sort of gives me a partial hedge, a bit of protection against it, and I like the fact that it had hidden... Um, uh, bullish divergence formed there. So that means I'm just hoping that this pushes right up. If it takes this trade out, so be it, but I'll profit enough on this sequence of trades to cover the loss on that trade. That's the plan. That's the theory. Now, whether that happens or not, <laughs> at the end of the day, price is king. It goes where it pleases. So, yeah. So that's the Aussie Swiss. I know it's a messy chart, probably a tough one to start with, but that's just in a nutshell. 
All right, let's go to the Aussie Yen. A bit simpler, I think. Uh, all right, again, we have three trades on, all in the same sequence. So it basically means I've hedged. So I took a buy here, took a sell, hedge sell, because this buy was based on hidden bullish divergence. You can see the green trend lines there. Um, higher lows on price and lower lows on the MACD platform, which is an oscillator. So hidden bullish divergence. Uh, I made another note there. Next, take out the previous high. I'd already drawn this trend line across here, and it just didn't push through it. So it's having a couple of goes at it. Remember, that's not an exact price. These resistance or support levels, they're just a, a zone. So we're having trouble breaking through that. Break even. So I've taken a second buy in here. As you can see the notes there, it's a bigger position size. Break even to 83.344, which is just above price at the moment. So it hasn't really got far to push up to get to the overall break even, just struggling a bit. Looked good on Thursday, Friday we had a bit of a drop. Monday it's starting to pick up again. MACD Platinum still below the zero level. Aussie New Zealand, no trades on, just a couple of trend lines drawn in. Now you'll see grey lines, vertical lines sometimes. Just either a warning or something I'm looked at, I could probably get rid of this one, it's no longer valid. The MACD Platinum's below the zero level. So there's a grey line here. It's just basically saying, look, there's a there's a red a green dot on the MACD platinum below the zero level, so I'm getting ready for a potential buy. Uh, I've drawn a trend line across here, uh, potentially setting up for a hidden bullish divergence. We've got this. It was a resistance level, now it popped up, now it became a support level, now it's sort of stuck around this blue level here. So. You know, people look at these patterns and stuff and lines. I just put them on the chart just to give you an idea where, where I think price is going. MAs, that's the 50, the 100, the 240. It's starting to it's flat, but it's starting to spread a little bit. So I'm, because the MACD Platinum's below the zero level, the zero level's this grey dotted line, I'm looking to buy here. Now, if price rolls over and comes down, and, you know, I, dra I drag this line down, 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 it's no longer potential divergence, I just delete those lines. So it's just a bit of preparation. I just keep them, I just adjust them every day just to make things easier that I'm not looking at a chart fresh every day. I've already got an idea what's happening. So that's the Aussie New Zealand, no trades on at the moment, not making a great deal on this pair, but it's it's a slow moving, you see it, it has some nice signals. Aussie USD, very similar to the Aussie Swiss, old sequence way back to the left somewhere. I'm not gonna scroll back. So, at the moment, uh, I've got to get up to 84 cents, which is no chance really anytime soon. These green lines are just big numbers. Now, especially with the Aussie, this is 70 cents, that's 75 cents there, it's 80 cents. So it does, if you notice the Aussie, it sort of does bounce off those numbers a fair bit. And they're just um, nice big round numbers, so it's just something to be aware of. There's some traders that base a lot of their trading on the round number theory, and you know, good on them. Works well some of the time, doesn't always work though. In the meantime, let's have a look what I'm doing. Um, so we've got this old sequence here. It's a big sequence, good profit on the Aussie. You can see here, my overall break even is 83, which is just up here somewhere. Uh, profit 1,900, so nearly $2,000. In the meantime, my last trade was this buy. The reason it's highlighted in pink as the MACD Platinum's already through the zero level, still heading up. So I'm just keeping an eye on it because I may look at taking some action on this last buy. So this buy was just in here, this level here. Uh, stop and place there. You can read my notes on that trade there. It was a high risk trade because uh, I took it on the same day as Aussie interest rate news was coming out. Uh, regular bullish divergence there. There's a, a um, bit of a, a support level also. You can see the blue line there. But the thing that concerned me was market structure. So you got this high, high here, comes down, and then this lower high. And now we've come up, we're not breaking this high either. So it sort of tells me, you know, that Aussie wants to head down. You know, people could make an argument, it's a head and shoulders. There's one shoulder, there's a head, there's the other shoulder, possible another shoulder. I don't know how many shoulders you got, but you know what I mean, like. So, and again, drawing my trend lines in, MACD Platinum's through the zero level, so I'm looking for sells anyway. And I'm also now starting to consider what sort of divergence is happening. So I'm thinking this is going to go at the downside. 
Hence, it's high love and pink because on this buy, the sequence two buy, I could look at maybe closing out half and jamming my stop up really tight so I can't lose anything on sequence two. Uh, if I get a sell signal on sequence one before it goes through that buy entry, I can look at just closing the buy, taking a small profit, then pivoting that sequence to the downside. So there's options there. So that's why it's highlight. I'm just watching. CAD Swiss. Uh, no trades on at the moment. Yeah, it's a pair I've had some dramas with for a few months <laughs> that I've got out of it all. Uh, now, again, trend lines are in place. Grey vertical line, a warning line, green dot on the MACD platinum below the zero level, looking for a buy until I get a green dot on the QMP filter. Not going to take it. This could be happen tomorrow. Might not happen. It may not happen. But in the meantime, potential hidden bullish divergence. So I'd enter this trade without a stop, looking to break this previous high up here and bring the MACD platinum up through the zero level. Price has come down pretty close to MA. It's probably not as close as, but close enough to keep me interested. So that's the CAD Swiss, no trade on the map. CAD Yen highlighted because I'm in a sell trade here and have been Stops being dragged down. Um, now, I should really, I'm keeping a very close eye on this one. A couple of reasons. One, the MACD Platinum's well and truly through the zero level. This was a high risk trade to start with. Uh, and I've had a couple of losses on this already. It's not a pair that pays me well. It's a pair I probably shouldn't even bother trading. But it just, it's there. It's not, it's not causing me too much grief. So I just plod along with it. Um, it's always good practice too. See, now we've got sort of divergence forming. Yeah, I was thinking the price, normally the price comes to the back to the MAs or the MAs goes to the price. There's still that fair gap between them there. But now we've got a green dot on the MACD platinum below the zero level, so I'm in buy mode. This sell, I've tightened up the stop. Uh, look, I should have really probably closed half, but I'm just going to watch it today, and if it if it goes nowhere today, I'm going to close half and tighten the stop up even closer. It's just not worth the risk. So that's a CAD yen in a sell. It's in a slight profit at the moment, but I want to try and recover some of these losses I've already had. And these are the losses. Took a sell there, high risk. Second sell, small loss, which was good, control it. You know, and you can see, even though price has gone up there nicely, it's struggling to make a much bigger high, but now it's sort of just consolidating a bit. Euro Aussie, uh, again, like the Aussie USD in an old sequence all the way back here, sequence one. They tend to move opposite each other, the Aussie USD and the Euro Aussie, uh, inversely correlated, very similar in their patterns, just upside down. So in the meantime, like the Aussie, I've made some good profit, just over 1,500, got an overall break even, 144, which is way down here somewhere, which is not going to reach. In the meantime, so that's sequence one. Don't worry about that too much. Sequence two, that's what the most recent trade. So I started with a sell there. You can read my notes. Nil stop, hidden bearish divergence. So there's my, you can see the red trend line there and the red trend line inside there. So I've got hidden bearish divergence. Took the sell, started to go in my favour, went against me, took a hedge buy in here and we had another sell here last week, and yeah, it's a it's previous high. You can see, I don't know what that red line's there. For. Oh, divergence there, just a confluence of trend lines, sort of thing. So, I took the sell Thursday, it smashed through my overall break even just for the sequence two. The break even sequence two is there. Uh, on Friday, that popped back up again. Today, it's starting to pop back down again. Oh, you know, you might may ask why I didn't take my break even when it presented on because the MACD Platinum's still well above the zero level. So that's my sort of, this is where you try to make the big money when you get the one, two, three trades like this with the hedging, you're really looking to cash out. What I'm trying to do is close the first two trades, partial close on the third trade, bring a stop in overall break even or something like that and make as much out of that third trade as possible. Uh, that's the plan. And in the meantime, the MACD Platinum, Back D platinum's above the zero level, so until it goes to the zero level, I'm not really looking at this setup. EuroCAD, no trade on, potentially setting up for a sell. Again, trend lines are drawn in place, hidden bearish divergence possibly forming. 
warning signal. We've got a red dot on the MACD platinum above the zero level, which is ideal. And we're waiting on a, a red QMP filter dot. The red dot's on the chart. If I get that, I'll take the sell. Pair it up, mind trading, doing all right. Euro pound, a lot of these Euro pairs are pretty similar. Same deal, set up, potential set up, looking for a sell. So pair it up, mind trading. I've had a bit of grief lately, it hasn't really been kind to me, but might be setting up nicely for a sell. Euro, yen, last trade was a buy in here, hit this previous high, it just couldn't break it now, it's dropping down, I closed out that buy. Not exactly set the world on fire. It's a pair of open mind trading, but I haven't done that well with it recently. Euro New Zealand. Uh, I'm in something here. Yes. Another sequence of no stops. Hidden bearish divergence. So there's your hidden bearish divergence. Also had this sort of high here, high. Now we had a third time here. So it's, I just keep on extending those lines, but now we've hit this low here. So we took a sell, took a hedge buy, and a second sell. Again, we smashed through the zero level on uh, the break even level on um, Thursday. The Friday we had a bit of a reversal. Now, Monday we're starting to head back towards it. And I will be keeping a closer eye on this one because the MACD platinum is getting close to the zero level. But I like the fact that we're having a bearish candle so far today. Now, that could change later today, obviously, but it's starting to head in the right direction, which is a good thing. So that's the one, two, three trade again. Euro USD, I did do something on this pair this morning. I moved my stop up. Um, so we're in a buy from here. Uh, a nice trend line break, had a buy signal, regular divergence, uh, had a stop in place. I think, so I already had a go at this. I had a buy here. So I had a loss there, $28 and took another one here. MACD Platinum still below the zero level. Now, the reason I moved my stop this morning was um, red dot on the MACD Platinum above the zero level. So like a lot of these other Euro pairs, start to look for a possible downside move. Again, we've got potential hidden bearish divergence forming. And to me, just the market structure, you see the high here, another high, not didn't break it, and it looks like this is rolling over, not going to break that, so you think the market's heading down. Just basic market structure stuff, MACD platinum above the zero. So we can't lose on that trade, which is good. Number there, 1.20, which is a big number on the Euro USD. Pound Aussie, not much happening on these pound pairs lately. Um, potential setting up for a hidden bullish divergence. You know, might be a signal tomorrow there. I'd probably take it. The MAs are very flat. Don't mind trading this pair. It's not, not not the most exciting pair to trade, but it can move at times, so just keeping an eye on it at the moment. Pound Swiss, I don't mind trading this pair. Again, um, had this extreme levels up here. Price shot up, and we had this pullback, which is to be expected. Now we're setting up for hidden bullish divergence there. Again, if I get a buy signal tomorrow, I'll take that, no worries at all. Uh, my only concern would be this level here. It's, if you look left, I think I can go across left, you'll see it's, it's a pretty significant sort of level. Been a couple of times there, price has gone to it. But, you know, is it self-fulfilling? Who knows with these <laughs> levels? I never know. But, yeah, so if we get a buy here, I'll, I'll be happy, more than happy to take it. Pound yen. Not much happening here either, similar to the other pound pairs. Potential bullish divergence, hidden bullish divergence setting up. Yeah. Price has come back a couple of times. So pair it up, my trading. A lot of people love trading the pound yen. Uh, not much doing at the moment. Pound New Zealand, this is one of my, not problem pairs, but I've got a lot happening here. I've got these two big sequences, had for a long time. A long time. Uh, it's a pair I, I like trading. It looks messy. The chart looks messy. But, you know, have a look at my profit to date, $11,186 there. So I'm making some good coin on it. Overall break game's a bit messy because of <laughs> my spreadsheets are, I don't think they're entirely accurate. That part's accurate. I'm down, um, I'm currently at minus one full lot, one lot and four micros. To the sell side, my last trade was this sell here, 
looks like looks like we're heading for a buy signal. What I'll do, I was hoping that this would pop down a bit further. What I'll do if I get a buy signal, I'll close out the last sell trades and double up again. Just basically pivot on these um, on these both these sequences and just keep on moving my overall break even. At the moment, my overall break even's here, so we're heading towards it. But I've got eleven thousand in the bank there on this pair alone. So all I do is close these two sell trades, add to this eleven thousand, and just try to go the other side. And eventually, one day I'll get a big move that'll just go through my break even, and I'll just clear it out. Even if you know all my trades on here were an overall loss of eight thousand, I could close them and still be three thousand in profit on this pair. So it's not this adding to the profit. I know it looks busy, and I understand that not everyone does the hedging or understands it. I get that. But I'm just trying something different, that's all. So it's a pair I don't mind trading. You'll see a pair I'll show you shortly that I dislike trading immensely, and I've got more grief for that one. Right, um, Pound USD did something here this morning, had a buy signal this morning. So I'm in two sequences here, and this sequence one was based on a hidden bearish divergence. But I dropped the ball someone in here, somewhere in here when I got a break even level, it came close to the MACD Platinum. I probably should have got out of that one. I didn't, now I'm stuck with it. So I've got a sequence that's dragging out a bit. Overall break even's up here, so it's not the end of the world. But have a look, profit, $9,300 on this pair. So it's a pair I like trading. Uh, I've actually made a lot more on that, but I had bigger position sizes, hence these notes you'll see on the charts sometimes. I had to adjust everything because it was crazy how much I was making on this based on bigger position size. But anyway, um, so sequence two is also based on hidden bullish divergence. So that, and this is dragging out a bit. You see the MACD platinum still below the zero level. So we've got a buy, hedge sell, second buy, second hedge sell, third buy this morning. So that was, so this morning I took a third buy on sequence two and an eighth buy on sequence one. My overall break even for sequence two is this yellow line, just you can just sort of see it there. And the overall break even for sequence one, I think it's the overall break even four, four, three, eight, nine. Yeah, it's the overall break even, so it's up there. Um, yeah, so we'll just try and get through sequence two first and we'll see how much money we can make there if we can. Got to try and get up, pop up here somewhere. Pound, there's a good little support level here. You can just see it, price has come down, gone up, come back down, so nice little double bottom support level there. And we're trying to go push up higher. Just dragging chain a bit lately, it's been a bit sideways, but that's what happened this morning. You can see various other notes on the charts regarding what I was thinking about the setups, etc. New Zealand CAD, this is one pair I probably messed up recently. I generally like trading this pair. It's Gave me some good profit. You can have a look at the nice little moves it makes. I took this buy in here and I got nervous when I had this sort of bearish candle in here somewhere. I'm not sure which one it was and got out the buy trade. All I could have done is close out half and brought my stop up a bit closer and I would have picked up that move up to the upside. But in the meantime, I didn't. So I didn't lose any money, which is a good thing. So now I'm looking for a sell to the downside is my next setup. No trades on at the moment, just a bit of a impatience. And what's one of my things? Patience, courage, and discipline. New Zealand yen. Uh, what have we got here? We've got a couple of trades. We've got a buy here based on hidden bullish divergence. Uh, the hedge sell, which was, yeah, I could have just closed that buy because I think there's only about six or eight pips between the buy and the sell. But I didn't. Um, so I took a second buy in here and Thursday popped up nicely, then Friday did what everything else did on Friday, went the wrong way. And now we're starting to pop back up today, which is good. My break even's there. I've got to watch the MACD platforms getting close to zero level. But I haven't got my, probably no risk on these two trades because they're so close, but now this third trade, I want, I want to see it pop up a bit. I might just close this out if I do get to overall break even. New Zealand USD, highlight in pink, similar to the Aussie USD. Um, last, I've got a couple old sequences. So sequence one, 
back here to the left, sequence two is in here based on uh, hidden divergence. You can see my notes in here. Sequence three was this buy. Now, I've, it's already gone through the zero level. That's why it's high on pink because I'm just watching it because we had that Friday, we had that bearish day. Popped up nicely on Wednesday. Thursday was a good follow through. Friday, not so good. Monday, starting to go again. So what I might consider tomorrow or just after today's price action, I might close because the buy is in this level here. So I've got a few pips there. I might close half and put my bring my stop up just below these all these little lows here. So it gives me an overall can't lose on that particular pair. Nice profit, 1,952. Um, I did have a buy trade on the 18th of March, which would have been in here. This one here, on a this would have been a sequence three buy trade, and I had a loss of $43. So I'm trying to recover some of that loss too. And there's sequence three notes there. Yeah, so all good on the New Zealand USD. Uh, USD, Swiss franc, this is my problem pair. This is the pair I hate me. <laughs> no. I've got three sequences from a long time ago. One, two, three. Uh, they're way back somewhere. Where are they? Yeah, you see two and three. So they're all back, back. It's hedging. Uh, it's sort of got away from me a bit. But in the meantime, I've made $10,000 profit, which is good. Um, just not really get, getting anywhere with these trying to close these trades. I don't like having so many trades all in the same direction. At the moment, I'm short on all three sequences, as you can see. The last trade was a sell trade up here, which is good. So if I get a buy trade, I will just close all the last three sell trades on all three sequences and take buy trades. The sell trades will give me another couple of thousand, probably in profit, depending on where I get my entry, which will add to this similar to the pound New Zealand, just keep on adding to the profit where I can and eventually, you know, have a look at the big picture and decide what to do with the sequences. Maybe close out a sequence, take a bit of a hit just to reduce my risk overall. Um, so, yeah, so it's a pair I don't like trading. I just can't seem to get much traction. Got a big cluster of trades up here, cluster of trades down here and sort of no man's land in here. But we've had a couple of nice moves recently which have helped me out. A lot of sideways action on here, which wasn't good, but now we're starting to get a few moves. That's a pound Swiss. Sorry, not a pound Swiss, USD Swiss. USD, Japanese yen, last pair. Uh, all right, this is a sequence, hedging sequence from this trade here, and it's been giving me some grief, I tell you. So it's initial sell, hedge buy, second sell, hedge buy again. Uh, I don't know why I've got... Why, why there's no red line in there? There should be a red line. There should be a red line. Let's just put that in there because there is a, definitely a trade in there. Sorry. There should be a sell in there. In here. Yeah, matching up that one. So there's a sell in there. So red, blue, red, blue, red, blue, red, red. Now, ah, I can see what I've done. I've accidentally moved a line somewhere in my travel, so we can get rid of that one. That's not supposed to be there, so it should be, I should fix it up. Yeah. Yeah, all right. So, we've got all these trades on, position size getting bigger and bigger, and there's my break even, this yellow line here. Getting close, getting closer, getting closer. Now, the MACD platform is a fair way below the zero level. So if I'll just have a look at what the swap rates are and as long as this MACD is still heading down, there's no green dot on there, I might just consider closing this whole sequence out. If it's break-even or a small loss, doesn't worry me. Uh, it just, you know, it's not worth, I mean, a lot of trades now, it's probably not worth being in so many. In the meantime, because, yeah, like, price should be coming back to the MAs. It's getting very close now and now we've got potential hidden bullish divergence forming, which is pretty obvious there. So that tells me we, we can head to the upside again. But in the meantime, price keeps on going down. If it just falls off a cliff today, great. If it comes down here, I could start getting a bit creative and making some more money, getting stops in place, etc. All right, that's it for all the charts. Uh, let's have a look at that Word document again. So in case you're wondering, <laughs> now you've seen all the lines and you're wondering what they are, Again, just pause the video, have a read of that. 
you do like the videos, please hit the subscribe button or at least hit the like button. That'd be greatly appreciated. I understand that they're not great Hollywood productions. There's no editing. I don't know how to edit. Uh, you probably hear a lot of ums and ahs. You see my mistakes. That's, that's just how it is in live trading when you call stuff and you're very transparent. Bit of pressure on you. Um, so, yeah, so here's all the what's all the charts. So have a read of that and life's good. So thanks again for watching. Again, my apologies for being a couple of days late. Uh, but it's actually turned out pretty good because I had a bit of free time. And I'll chat to you good folk another day. Cheers.